So welcome back. In the last video, we looked at a competitor analysis. We thought about how your website, your WordPress website fits into the broader picture, whether that, that, that be your business, your product, your service, your organization, your landing page, whatever you want to do with this WordPress website, we ask you to take a little bit of time and to think about sort of the competing forces and where your website might fit in. In this video, we want to go one step further and start mocking up your WordPress website with what we call a wireframe. Very common practice in web development. Um, we're going to sort of use an intermediate version, a very sort of simple, straightforward approach um, that you might not use if you worked in industry. But again, we're learning to build one of our first WordPress websites. So it's not super important that we use industry standard tools. That being said, if we were to bring over a web page like this one, um, a very sort of like a common tool is called Figma or Sketch. So we'll go here. So Figma looks something like this. You can try it for free. It's kind of cool. Sketch looks something like this. There's also Balsamic and of course there's Adobe in the space. But it's a little bit more complex than what we're, we are potentially going to need. So what we'll do is we'll go to just our Google Drive and we have a couple. And what we're going to do is I'm going to propose that we just create a, oh, you get to see all my dirty laundry. We're just going to create a Google Slides and we'll use that for creating a wireframe. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my presentation. So sample wireframe, we'll call this Splativity homepage. And one thing I like to do is you can sort of see that the orientation, I believe now is landscape and we actually want it to be portrait. So we could scroll down and we'll go to page setup and you would click something like custom. And what if we were just to invert this? So this were to be 10 and we hit apply. And now our page looks something like this. And I'm just gonna quickly, you can delete these. Or if you didn't want to, you could just come here, right click, and then go to change background. No, apply layout. And you would just go to a completely blank slide. And so this is going to be sort of the canvas, so to speak, for our website. And we want to think about what kind of site we're going to, we're going to make for splativity.com. And the sort of the WordPress theme that we're going to use is, is called Astra, A-S-T-R-A. And if you go to their website, which of course you don't have to do, but it's wpastra.com, then you can go to starter templates. And what I like to do is I like to browse through these templates to sort of think about sort of how I might kickstart whatever project I'm working on. Um, and you can go here and there's two types. There's free and agency. Agency meaning you have to pay for it. So let's do free. And you could scroll down. A lot of people like outdoor adventure. You might see some tutorials with that type of um, theme or that template uh, here on YouTube as well as on Udemy. And if you scroll down, we're gonna choose something that should be called Sierra Nature. So if you go in here, you can get a preview of what the site looks like. You can get a preview of the home page, the about page, the additional pages here, as well as the take action. We're gonna go back to the home page, and obviously the URL will be different for our website, but you can sort of start to get a sense of what this theme or this template would look like. And so you have what's called a nav bar or menu up here. And then you have, a, we'll call it a hero section with uh, a photo that you scroll down, has some text and a button and a new section here. Not bad. We have a section with a cool, uh, a cool photo background. Scroll down some products, which we could turn into our products because again, we're building a website in this course for Splativity, splativity.com. Splativity is a business that my co-founder Ryan and I run on the side teaching courses. And then we have this little call to action section and a footer. If we were to imagine taking this 
website and sort of tweaking it for our needs. You obviously don't have to do a wireframe, but sometimes it's good to sort of think through what is necessary and what is not. So what we might do is we'll go back to our sample page here. We'll actually pop this out. We'll go to our sample page here. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is let's just like put in a section for this nav bar. We will sort of just wing it, I guess is the way to say it, but we'll create a shape and it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is just sort of like a rough idea. Then if we go back to our page, we have our little logo, we have some links and a button. And so what I like to do is I like to sort of have standard colors for different things. So I'm going to make a text box here and we'll put it something like this. And we'll make the background say this purple pinkish color and we'll say logo and we'll sort of remember in our minds that this pink color is is for a photo or for a png or a logo or whatever and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back here to our our example we probably want a home page and maybe we want an about page or a contact page or take action but we're going to sort of simplify things so we're not making a super complicated website. We're just making a website that we can sort of show, started to type what I was saying, to, to show um, our products and services. Oops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and then I'm gonna try and copy it. And we'll just have two links, maybe a home page and a contact page and then we'll create a button. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it over. Again, this is this is pretty basic, um, crude method of doing things, but we'll say button. And so now in my head I'm saying, okay, well this red color is, means that it's a button, here it's a logo or a photo, and then these two are, are links. And then we'll go back to our section, our page here, and so we've sort of taken care of this navigation bar of this menu. Now let's sort of address this bigger section, which is the, the photo in the background and then some text and a button. What I might do in that case is I'll go back here and I'll create a shape. I'll put the shape. It doesn't really matter 100% sort of what the dimensions are. Again, it's not aligned as, as much as you might if, if you were actually doing this for a client, but we're doing this for our own purposes and so the sort of the more rough approach should should be just fine and we're going to say this is going to be a photo so maybe we'll again turn it into the pink oops well that didn't work we'll change the background to pink and then we'll sort of copy one of these text boxes which super didn't work so you know, sometimes it's just easier to go here and we'll we'll call this a ti we'll call this a title. So we'll go back. We'll call this a title and then we want a button. So we'll copy and paste a button here. And maybe we'll center this. Obviously, you can choose to put as much or as little effort into this process as you would like. And maybe I'll do title in caps. But again, it doesn't 100% matter. We just want to get a rough version. And so if we move back here, we could add some text here, but we don't have to. Again, I'm having some major problems. And this would sort of all be centered in the best of worlds, but it's totally fine. And so now if we come back here, we've we've made this navigation bar and then we have the the text and the button and then some more buttons. And then we're going to make this section here. So what we could do is we could take this and we'll copy this and we'll just drag it down. Now, because if we look here, it's there's not a photo background, we could change the color of this back to solid gray. We just match this color. 
the theme gray. So go here to the theme gray. And then we have some text or a title. Title. Drag this down. Oops. So we have text, title, well, this is technically a, probably a title, but whatever. Text, text, button. And again, we're sort of just doing this rough sketch. We scroll down, there's another photo background section with a, a box here and then some text. So what we, what we might do is copy the section, but you were sort of getting near the end of the page. So what I might do instead is I'll just duplicate the slide We'll go back here and we're on the second slide. We don't need these items here. So we can move everything up. These things we'll just drag to the side because maybe we'll need them later, maybe we won't. But we go back here, let's create a little box for this portion and then a box for this portion in web speak, it might be called a div, div. And we'll do something like this and we'll say we don't, we want it to be transparent, but we do want it to have a border. So we'll have a black border just so that you can sort of see a little bit better. And we'll copy this and try to roughly align it. And so we have this, we'll have this section here and this section here. And what I like to think about is, is sometimes you're not actually gonna need all of this information. Maybe we'll just have this title and then these sections here, a couple of these sections. So again, you would sort of wanna think about what your individual version of this might look like. But for us, maybe it might be something like, we would have some text here and then we'd have a title. And then we'd have some more text. And if you wanted to, if it was useful to you, you could again sort of add some of these, these bigger boxes. So we could copy this box and then just drag and drop so that the size is a little bit smaller. A wireframe is supposed to make your, e your work easier in the future. It doesn't always make sense to do this if you are going to use a visual drag and drop builder like that of Elementor in the, in the WordPress tutorials like we're gonna do, but sometimes it's still sort of a cool skill to learn. And then we can just select all this section. And let's imagine that we wanted to have this same framework, but inverted, meaning this major section here. So if we go back, we want to have this on the left and this on the right for our wireframe. We might copy this. We'll drag it down. Keep dragging. And we'll deselect this big section. Move this over here. and then move, slide this sort of back into shape. And then we probably want to send it back. So order, send it back. Order, send it back. And honestly, that's looking just fine. We, in theory, would have made this section. Um, and we'll, we'll just leave off some of this for our actual product. And what we're gonna do here is maybe we can imagine 
Rather than having products, you might have our, our courses, firstvolatility.com, and we have two courses, so we, don't, we wouldn't need three sections here. So if we were to go back to our wireframe, you could either create a new page, which might not be a bad idea, or you could use one of these. It's totally up to you. But what we're going to do is we'll probably just delete some of this stuff. And if you scroll up here, maybe we'll copy this sort of format. And we'll paste it down here and move it up. It actually makes no sense why I did that rather than just create its own circle, but it's totally fine. So we have some a title, which we can go and grab here. And then we had those photos. So if we go back here, we have photos with title and text. So we could do photo. Sometimes it's hard to select the right elements in Google Slides. And so we might have sort of a section that has a little title, photos, text, or rather title and text, which would look maybe something like this. Then we have a call to action section. So in this case, let's just create another divider or div box and then here we're going to just have a title and a button. So I'm going to grab this title here, and then I'll just grab this button for fun. And you, you can see sometimes this it's a little bit faster. Oops. We might need to send this to back. And so we have a section that looks like that. Let's imagine that we're going to then create a footer. If you wanted to try to get the size correct, you could. And if we go back here, let's just imagine that we didn't want to keep all this. I don't think we will in the course. I don't really like the style, but we have our, we're gonna have a copyright and then a powered by. So here you could add, it looks like it would just be regular text. And if you fail to do that, you can just do text and text. So if we go back to our homepage and we scroll up here, we created a, nav a navigation bar or a menu here with a logo and then a couple of links. We chose not to have five links, but rather two, and then a button, which logo, link, link, button. Then we have this section with the photo and then some text here, a title and a button which we had here. If you wanted to be more realistic, you could move this up because you notice that the navigation bar here is transparent, but for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. If you wanted to add this little icon, you could, but we'll leave it as is. Then we have this next section, which has title, text, text, button. So text, title, text, text, button. Sweet. Then we came down here and we modified sort of the visual appearance. So what we did is we had title, or rather text, title, text, title, text. So when we moved here, text, title, text, title, text here. 
And again, it's on the background of an image. And then we had some, uh, we had a title here. And then we thought it would be cool if we were to copy this section because maybe there's four different points we want to make this title text sort of framework, but we didn't want it to be sort of the same for both of them. We wanted to invert it. So we'll do that in our course title over here. And then this section with two subsections here, then we scroll down and rather than have a section here with three photos, we decided to just, or three sections, we decided to have two subsections. So what we did is text, title, photo, tech, title, text. Oh man, this is a tongue twister. So it should probably be text, title, photo, title, text. We'll just leave it as is. Because again, the, the sort of the purpose of this is getting just a rough sketch. It should be useful to you in the future, not um, create a lot of extra, extra non-necessary work. And then we have this final section with a title and then a button, so title button. And then we decided we were gonna modify the footer. We were gonna remove this and then have text, text in our footer. All right, so in this video, we wanted to create a mock-up or a wireframe, which we just chose to use Google Slides. You could use whatever tool you wanted, whether that be Sketch or Figma or another tool. A lot of people, sort of in their development process, particularly when building their first WordPress websites, choose to not do a wireframe. That's totally fine. I know I'm guilty of that, but as you progress in web development or building your own site or products, sometimes it can be really useful to sort of think in this like big picture abstract way. And we chose to do so and build a wireframe. So we sort of had this very crude version, but it was supposed to, at least in theory, map to something like this, which we'll use this in a future video to create a template that will then make our own and we'll build out the splotivity.com website. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video where we will talk about the idea of assembling site assets, meaning your photos, text, copy, link, that kind of thing. Again, it's a part of the web development process that not everyone does, including myself sometimes, but it's a best practice. So that's why we want to cover it. And with that, we'll let you go. Thank you for your time and see you again soon. Cheers.